Shalom and welcome to another edition of our Daily Bread, uh, Pesach edition. Um, Hag HaMatzah to everybody. Um, this week's parasha uh, is the uh, Passover uh, Shabbat parasha. Uh, so this is uh, found in Exodus 33, 12 through 34, 26, and then Numbers 28, 19 through 25. And... Um, my mass message for 2014-15 Passover is called Show Me Now Your Way. And what I'm going to do is this will be broken up into actually five uh, smaller part videos instead of doing one long video. That way uh, I can talk a little bit uh, on each point and you can watch all the videos if you want or just some of them. The links will be below to the other videos. The first part is called The Way Before Dwelling. And um, as a, since it's, uh, we are dead Pesach, so now we're on a Feast of Unleavened Bread, Hag HaMatzah. So I will have a little piece of matzah. Mm. Just to get in the mood. And uh, we make the matzah ourselves. Super easy. A lot of people go out and buy the little square matzah but you can make your own matzah with just some flour and water and a little oil and salt rolled out bacon in the oven and it certainly beats making a cracker or eating a cracker I should say um, and you can make it thin if you want like a cracker or you can make it more like bread if you make it thicker um, anyway so let's get started this video is called the way before dwelling and if we read if we look at the opening segments here it says and Moshe said unto me see you say unto me bring up this people and you've not let me know whom you will send with me yet you have said I know you by name and you have also found favor in my sight so verse 13 uh, Exodus 33 13 says now therefore I pray you if I have found favor in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you. This is a big verse. Um, first of all, it's big because um, Mashiach says, I am the way. And so when he says, show me now the way, I think it's also a, a reference to Messiah, Mashiach, which is also the spirit of the Torah. Um, and it makes sense along with, with other things as well. But it says that I may know you. So even Mashiach says, Many come to me in that day saying, Lord, Lord. And he says, Get away from me. I never knew you. Right? You who do lawlessness. You who are breakers of the law. And so, so this whole verse is very powerful because I think it, it gives us two clues that this is about um, Mashiach. And then, and then also it says, that I may find favor in you in your sight. And favor, some you would translate that as grace, but also points back to Mashiach. And Mashiach had the favor of Yorewahe and was blessed by Yorewahe. And why? Because he obeyed. Um, obedience brings favor. And you know that's an easy concept to understand when you read through the scriptures. You can see the people who obeyed Yorewahe had found favor, and people who disobeyed didn't find favor. So the big debate over what is grace and what does it mean, you don't have to pull out ten dictionaries or lexicons. Read the Bible. If you read the whole Bible, it's pretty easy to know what favor is and what grace is, and who got it and why. Now, if you're, you want to go a step further, you can get on a simple program like eSword. Um, you can download e-sword.net, and you can type in the word for the the Hebrew word for grace and the Strong's, and uh, just look up all those verses where it's been used in the entire Bible, and then you can categorize them. What's going on when they're being used? What other words are used with them? And you just make a little T chart and put in there all the categories, categories, 
What's it saying? What's it talking about? You do that through the whole Bible. That's what I did. You want to know a biblical word? Look at its context throughout the entire Bible. That will define it for you and tell you what it means. It will tell you what biblical grace is instead of what your pastor is telling you grace is or what some dictionary says it is. You don't need those. You can figure it out for yourself. The Word of God will define itself and make itself apparent. So um, you do that and then you cross-reference it and you kind of come down to it being talked in the context of two things. And then, and then if you want to say, well, based on the way it's used throughout the entire scripture in the context of how it's always used, is this free gift? I think don't think you're going to be able to justify that. Um, is it tied to anything? Yes. As a matter of fact, the phrase, if I have found favor in your eyes, is the most common use of that word throughout the scripture. And that would denote that there's an observation and a judgment made based on what the person sees. And that's how it's used throughout the entire Bible. So that's why I prefer the translation of favor rather than grace, which seems like this this thing that people have been arguing about and what is this and what is that. Favor is pretty straightforward. It lines up with what the biblical context means. Someone's favoring a person. A person is finding favor. In other words, in that sense, it isn't something that from the giver is required. It's something extra that the giver is giving to the person. But where people miss it is that there's a reason why that person has found favor in their eyes. It's a judgment call that that person makes, looks upon that person, and determines if they find favor on them. And if they do, they show them favor. If, for whatever reasons, whatever it is that they see, that merits that favor. So, you know, instead of just jumping into a common biblical argument, just research it, study the Bible for yourself, and you can then ask yourself those same questions and let the context of the entire Bible answer them for you instead of just jumping into someone else's arguments. Um, so the interesting thing here that we see, and why this is important, is because what you're going to see is that the way before dwelling. Um, the last part is, and consider this nation your people. So if you look at that in the context of Pesach and the four cups, you know, I will be your Elohim and you shall be my people. That's the fourth cup. That's the cup of completion. But before that, there's three cups. Okay? So there's sanctification and, and, and deliverance and redemption. Okay? So if you look at all those elements and you see in here, he's saying, show me now the way. Right? Because he wants to get to the goal of God dwelling with him. So he's saying, show me the way to get to that point. Okay? And as we learn in Parashat Shemini, which is next week's Parashat, the idea of doing the offerings so that God's glory will appear, that's going to play into this as well. So God's glory appearing isn't just something cool to see. It means he's dwelling in the tabernacle that they've built and they've followed his instruction and his commandments. And when they've done all the things that were required of them and commanded for them and they obey the commandments <clears throat> the net result is the presence of God then dwells among them and so you can see this here when it says show me now your way that I may know you right is getting all that instruction getting all those things what's it going to take for you right that I may find favor in your sight and, con the, and consider this nation as your people how do we get to the end, right? The favor is, as we see right there in the next couple of verses, it says, "My," and he said, my presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said, if your presence go not with me, carry us not up from here, okay? So that, that favor is that you dwell among your people, and and that, that's that presence. That's what he's seeking after. He's seeking after that fourth cup. He's desiring that fourth cup, which is to be God's child and, and God to be his God and to dwell together. And so when you look at 
you know, show me now the way. Well, the way is all those instructions and all those commandments. That's that's a revealing of the law. And we're going to see, as we get a little further in here, that's actually literally what he's going to do. He's going to be uh, hewing out the table of stone, right? And giving him the second law, which is interesting, because he'd already been given the law once. Now he's getting the second law. Do you think it's a coincidence that he's asking him to show him the way and that he's getting the second law? Well, Mashiach is that second law. Moshe represents the, the letter of the law and the first coming of the Torah, revelation of the Torah. <clears throat> and the second revelation of the unseen Torah, right? the spiritual meanings, is represented by Mashiach. <coughs> so Moshe is asking to see the way. And then he's given the second giving of the law. Mashiach came as a second witness to the law. It's like a second giving of the law. So all this stuff is is interesting in pattern, and it's not just it's not just uh, what you read, but there's patterns and there's deeper meanings and there's connections to the whole story of the Torah. And once you see those things and you're aware of them, not only because you study the whole Torah and you can start to assemble it. It becomes amazing. Each piece becomes more and more magnificent. Now, there's people who have the Torah and it, they see nothing from it. They haven't even figured that you should obey God, that that's a requirement, or that you need to keep the law. But they have the same Bible. It has the same words that you have. And it's a blessing when your eyes are opened up to be able to see more of the wonderful, as it says, you know, Show me all the wonderful things in your Torah, right? That's that's this desire, I believe, of Moshe to see the next witness. And there's all these other patterns and prophecies, essentially, that are built into this little segment. But the big question is, what are you asking for? Because a lot of people, they don't want to know the way to get there. They just want to get there, right? They want favor of God. But they don't want to know the way to get there. The way is the law. Right? It says Moshe brings us to Mashiach. They don't want Moshe and the law. They just want to be at Mashiach. There's millions of people claiming to follow God that have that theology. And it just doesn't line up with the scriptures and the followers of God that came before them. So, so this here talks about favor. And, and it says that I may know you. Again, that's to get to that phase where Mashiach doesn't say, I never knew you. Okay? And he said, if you would believe Moshe, you'd believe me because he wrote of me. But because you don't believe his words, how can you believe the words that I'm saying? You see, it goes back to Moshe. Right? That's the way to considering this nation as your people. Everybody wants to be the children of God. They want to be the friend of God and all these other things they want. They want the blessings. They want the favor. They want all this stuff. What they're not asking is what Moshe asked, which is show me the way to get there. Not just give it to me. Show me the way. That way you can do it. So that's the question I pose for you is what are you asking for? Are you asking for reward? Are you asking for all of your sins to be forgiven? And then, oh, well, you'll figure a relationship out. God, you know, it's like like the bad argument that many messianics say: we keep the law because we are saved. So, you know, give me the reward, and then I'll go back and I'll I'll then find importance in keeping your law. You know, that's why I'll keep it because you already paid me to keep it. Well, then you're a hired servant. You're not a son. The son wants to be like his father and obey his father, not for reward, but because that's his father. The hired worker only works because he's being paid. So if that's how you're approaching it, if you're saying, hey, I want your favor, I want you to consider me your people, and you're not asking for him to show you the way, see, that's a filter. That'll tell you what you're trying to do, who you are. So I hope this was a blessing to you. Uh, I'll say, Hag uh, Sameach, and the next video is called Consider This Nation Is Your People. 
that the link will be down there. Hit subscribe, leave your comments. I'd love to hear your opinions, your thoughts, what you think about the videos uh, and the portion. And um, until the next video, I'll say shalom.